What's up everybody, Chris here from Project Option, and in this video you're going to learn about the option Greek known as Vega. Now Vega represents an option's sensitivity to changes in implied volatility, so it is an important one. Let's get into it. So what is an option's Vega? Well, Vega represents an option's sensitivity to 1% changes in implied volatility. So it's how much an option's price should change relative to 1% changes in implied volatility. Now, this is also sometimes referred to as Vega risk or volatility risk. So let's go through some basic examples to show you how Vega is applied. So let's say we have an option that's worth $10 and that option's Vega is 0.25. That 0.25 represents the option's expected price change with a 1% increase in implied volatility. Now, if implied volatility falls by 1%, then the options price is expected to fall by the amount of its vega. So for example, if we experience a 1% increase in implied volatility, that $10 option is expected to increase by 25 cents. Now on the other hand, if we have a 3% decrease in implied volatility, that options price is, ex is expected to decrease by 75 cents. Now that's 25 cents per 1% decrease, so 3 times 25 cents is 75 cents. So, if we look at the 15 cent option with a vega of 0.01, a 1% increase in implied volatility should mean that that 15 cent option is now worth 16 cents. Now on the other hand, if implied volatility fell by 3%, that 15 cent option is expected to lose its, its vega value times 3. So 15 cents minus the 1 cent times 3, since there's a 3% decrease, gives us a 12 cent option. So in other words, Vega is how much an options price is expected to increase by with a 1% increase in implied volatility, or how much the options price is expected to decrease by with a 1% decrease in implied volatility. Now the last thing I'll mention is that while Vega is explained as an options price change relative to changes in implied volatility, I actually don't really like that definition because changes in option prices is what drives implied volatility. So for example, if the market starts buying options in a frenzy, those option prices are going to increase and implied volatility is going to increase. So it's not the increase in implied volatility that causes expensive option prices, it's an increase in option prices that leads to the increase in implied volatility. So where I'm going with this is that another way to interpret Vega is if the options price increases by the amount of Vega without any changes in the stock price or the passage of time, then you would expect implied volatility to have increased by 1%. So now that you know what Vega represents, let's go ahead and talk about which options have the most exposure to Vega. So in this first visual, we're just looking at the amount of Vega at each strike price versus the strike price. So as we can see here, the at the money strike price is 200. And the options with the most Vega exposure are the at the money options. Now as we can see, the in the money and the out of the money options have lower amounts of Vega exposure. Now this can be explained by the fact that at the money options have the most extrinsic value. In this next visual, we're looking at the same plot, so we're looking at the Vega values at each strike price, except this time we're looking at multiple different expiration cycles. So the blue line is 15 days to expiration, the green line is 71 days to expiration, and the red line is 225 days to expiration. Now as we can see here, the longer term options have more exposure to Vega. Now again, that gets back to the extrinsic value discussion. Longer term options are more expensive and therefore have more extrinsic value and therefore they have more exposure to Vega. So on the next slide we're actually going to look at some examples to illustrate why longer term options have more exposure to changes in implied volatility. So why do longer term options have more exposure to changes in implied volatility? Well consider the following scenario. So in this table, we're looking at two call options with the same strike price and in the same implied volatility environments, with the only difference being the number of days to expiration. So in the first row, we're looking at a 100 call with 30 days to expiration. And we can see that with implied volatility at 20%, the call option is worth $2.29. 
Now, with implied volatility at 21%, that same option is worth $2.40. So the increase in the options price by 11 cents resulted in a 1% increase in implied volatility. Now let's drop down to the next row. So we're looking at a 100 call with 365 days to expiration in this case. So with 20% implied volatility, the options price is $7.98. Now if implied volatility kicked up to 21%, the options price is $8.38, so a 40, 40 cent increase. Now the only difference in these two scenarios is the number of days to expiration. So all else being equal, a longer time frame will have more expensive option prices because there's a larger expected move for the stock price over longer periods of time. So to build on that last point, we just discovered that longer term options have more expensive option prices and therefore more extrinsic value, but why does that lead to more exposure to implied volatility? Well, let's consider a hypothetical example. So consider we have option A and option B. And in both scenarios, implied volatility is currently 1%. Now let's say option A has 25 cents of extrinsic value and option B has 75 cents of extrinsic value. Now if both of these options went to $0, implied volatility would be 0. Okay, so for, for both of these options to get to $0, they don't have to lose the same amount. One of them has to lose more. So to get to zero dollars, option A has to lose 25 cents and option B has to lose 75 cents. So for that 1% decrease in implied volatility, option A has to lose 25 cents and therefore its vega is 25 cents and option B has to lose 75 cents, which means its vega is 75 cents. So all I'm saying here is that options with more extrinsic value have higher vega values because if you consider in a scenario where implied volatility went to 0%, all option prices would be $0 in that case and the options with the most extrinsic value have the most to lose per percentage decrease in implied volatility. So let's go over the summary of main concepts that you've learned from this video. First, Vega estimates the change in an option's value relative to changes in implied volatility. Now, as you know, I have an alternative definition, which is if an option increases or decreases by the amount of its Vega without any change in the stock price or any passing of time, you would expect implied volatility to increase or decrease by 1%. Now, Vega is expressed as a positive number since option price increases cause implied volatility increases, all else being equal. Now conversely, when option prices decrease, implied volatility also decreases, all else being equal. And lastly, the options with the most Vega risk are the options with the most extrinsic value. And as a result, at the money options with more time until expiration have the most exposure to changes in implied volatility. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all the videos that we come out with in the future. Also, it would be a huge help to support our community.